Recall that in our discussion on alternating electric current, we said that electric generators are responsible for producing alternating electric current. But how exactly do electric generators work? That's what we're going to discuss in this lecture. So let's begin by defining the main function of an electric generator. An electric generator essentially transforms mechanical energy into electric energy. That is, it uses the concept of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction to produce an alternating electric electric current. So let's begin by looking at the following general diagram of an electric generator also known as an AC generator. So here we have the following two different poles of a magnet. We have a north pole and a south pole and these magnets will essentially produce an external magnetic field given by B external that will begin on the north pole and will point towards the south pole so those magnetic field lines are not shown in this diagram so we also have an axle uh, essentially a lever arm and the lever arm the axle is connected to the following coil of wire so we essentially take our coil or we take our axle and we rotate our axle and that rotates this coil of wire now recall any time we have a moving conducting loop of wire inside a magnetic field that will induce an EMF and that EMF is known as motional EMF. So as a result of that induced EMF an alternating electric current will begin to flow within the following coil of wire and that induced EMF can be read between the following two points A and B. Now in just a moment we're going to show why our electric current is an alternating electric current. But let's begin by overviewing what we just said. So an electric generator also known as an AC generator works in the following way. You turn the axle by some mechanical means and this rotates the coil of wire. Now in this diagram we only show one coil of wire but note that this coil of wire can, can consist of many coil of wires, coils of wire. So, as the coil moves within our magnetic field, an EMF is induced and this is known as motional EMF. Now this in turn produces a current inside our coil and this electric current is an alternating electric current as we'll see in just a moment. So now let's move on by using, let's move on to the following section in which we're going to use Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction to essentially show that our induced EMF varies sinusoidally and that creates a sinusoidal electric current that is it creates an alternating electric current. So suppose that the coil is rotating with an angular velocity given by omega. Now recall by Faraday's law our induced EMF is equal to the negative of the rate of change of our magnetic flux with respect to time. Now let's assume that our external magnetic field is uniform, it's constant and that implies that our magnetic flux is simply equal equal to the dot product of the magnetic field vector and our area vector. Now by definition of dot product this is equal to the product of the magnitude of B, A and cosine of the angle theta where this angle theta is the angle between our magnetic field vector and our area vector. Now by definition of angular velocity, angular velocity is equal to the rate of change of angular displacement with respect to time. So omega is equal to d theta divided by d time where theta is our angular displacement. Now 
we can take this equation, rearrange it, and we get the following result. So we bring dt to the left side, we see omega multiplied by dt is equal to d theta. Now, let's take the integral of both sides. If we integrate both sides, we get the following result. The left side becomes omega t plus theta naught, and our right side becomes theta. Now, we can choose theta naught to be zero, and if we choose this to be zero, this will cancel out, and we're simply left with omega times time is equal to theta. Now, let's go back to this equation, and let's replace theta with our omega times t. So we see our induced EMF is equal to negative our derivative of B A cosine of omega t divided by dt. Now, this is equal to, we can bring our constants B and A out of our equation and we get the following result. Remember, our B is assumed to be a constant and the area also remains the same. So now we are left with the following result. We see that our induced EMF is equal to negative B A D cosine of omega T DT. Now, if we actually take Take the derivative of this function, we get negative sine of omega t multiplied by our omega. The negative signs will cancel and we're left with the following result. So we see our induced EMF that is produced within our coil as our coil rotates within our uniform magnetic field varies with respect to time. So, induced DMF is equal to B A omega multiplied by sine of omega times T. So we see that our induced EMF varies sinusoidally. And that's exactly why our electric current also varies sinusoidally with respect to time. So it alternates back and forth. Now, this equation gives us our induced EMF within our loop of wire when we're dealing with a single loop of wire. What if our coil consists of many loops of conducting wire? So if the coil contains n loops of conducting wire, then the equation becomes as follows. We simply take this right side and multiply it by n. So we see that our induced EMF due to n loops of wire is given by the following equation. Once again, our induced EMF depends on time and it depends sinusoidally. It varies sinusoidally and that's exactly why this produces an alternating electric current because our EMF is also alternating. Now this quantity n times b times a times omega is also known as our amplitude voltage, our amplitude EMF. It's the peak EMF, it's the highest value that our voltage attains and it's given by E with the not symbol on the bottom. So this is known as our peak voltage that is produced by our electric alternating generator. So once again, the entire purpose of an electric generator is to produce an electric current that in this case is alternating. Our electric generator transforms some form of mechanical energy into electric energy.